Welcome back. In this video, we'll be going over contacting MicroTik support. So this will be quite an interesting lesson because it's not so much about configuring things, but more or less about how to approach problems and how to correctly log it with the support team. So let's get into the video as we work our way through support out files, automatic sub out, uh, stuff like diagrams, places that you can get information and ultimately just sending that support email. All right, let's get into it. All righty, so let's get into making our configuration more readable and understandable so that if people from the outside look at the configuration, they actually know what we're doing. So if I go to my home microtech and I go to the interfaces, this is already a great example of a bad <laughs> configuration because none of my interfaces are labeled. Nobody will know what Ether 1 and 2 is responsible for on this diagram they, they, or on this topology. They don't even know what any of the other interfaces do. So what I could potentially do is let's just label our interfaces. If I connect something on Ether1, be descriptive about it. So I'll double click on it and then I can give Ether1 a different name. So I, I, I still recommend leaving Ether1 there so you know it is Ether1, but then maybe you could do something like a dash WAN or let's give it a space with a box and call that the WAN. <clears throat> and my Ether2, I'll do the same with the box and make this my LAN. So this is already a lot better because now somebody that looks at the configuration understands Ether1 is where my internet comes in and Ether2 is going to connect to my LAN network. I mean, that that's already a lot better. If I look at my IP addressing, I can also see now this IP range belongs to the LAN. So that's really straightforward. There's also comments that you can leave to give more description for a configurable item. So if I go into my IP firewall, but this it, it, it's for anything really. Here you can see I've already made a comment, but if you, um, if you want to, you can just double click on the item, click on the comment, and then you can set the comment whatever you want to. So I might just make that this uh, rule is for internet. And I'll apply that. So now if somebody looks at the configuration, they can actually see this rule is for internet. Uh, you don't need to leave comments for everything, but if there is something custom you're doing and it maybe needs some explaining, then leave a comment about that. All right, so this covers making our configuration more readable and accessible for people viewing from the outside. Next thing I'd recommend is maybe mapping or creating a, a diagram of the issue or your network, because that can also potentially help the people at Microtech or even when you post somewhere on a on a forum or Facebook or a Discord group or somewhere that can already help the people you're trying to show what the issue is, where the issue might be. So I'm just going to open up my browser and then I'm going to head to uh, a nice site called draw.io. And then in draw.io, I've already got some weird topology here, but you can use this potentially to create stuff like um, a diagram to illustrate exactly your network. You could come here and create stuff like, a, you could show them, there's my router. You could show them, here's my switch. <clears throat> and you can explain what type of links are hap connecting between your router and switch. Is it wireless stuff? Is it cable? Is it fiber? What speed? Are there any VLANs? So I'm not going to build a topology here from scratch now, but it, it, this is a great tool that you could potentially use to show exactly your topology, how your connection or your network is connected, just to give people some more insight to help them if you need to troubleshoot something. And before running off to support, please, I highly suggest, reach out to those communities, go to the forum. There's a wide array of different topics here that you can go into and see firstly, has somebody else experienced your issue? If they have, then you can go there and see how they potentially fixed it. And there's already one way to fix your issue or post about it here. You can come here, you can create a new post if you log in and you can explain to people, hey guys, this is the issue, show them your diagram. And then you could also potentially give them an export of your configuration. But if you export your configuration, I highly recommend using the export function, giving it a file name like my config, but you, you Put on hide sensitive. Reason being is this will hash out any passwords so that you can potentially just share this configuration file with anybody. So I just want to download this my config quickly. Let's put it on my desktop. And if I open this up with a notepad, 
wherever there was a password, it's it's gone now. So that will potentially help if I want to share my configuration with somebody without potentially causing a security issue. All right, so that sums up um, that portion. Now I just want to also ask you, look at more external resources. Besides the forum, Microtech has their TOC, uh, which you can access on their wiki. And this contains a whole well of information. I've come here before, and this has helped me tremendously figure out an issue. If I'm trying to configure something, they even give examples, and this is a great reference point to try and fix your issues. Um, there's also the Microtech user meetup, the MUM, uh, which is a great exhibit of people showcasing how to fix certain issues or showing some products or stuff that they're making for Microtech, which is, is pretty useful. Um, not always the best place for troubleshooting, but there's great information there. And lastly, we, we do have this um, documentation. So if you come to marketic.com forward slash support, if you go to the documentation, there's this whole marketing help section. And this contains, like marketing is busy trying to move all of their information to here, but it will show you awesome examples as well. It's, it's like the TOC, but just a bit more modern, a little bit better. Okay. And now finally, we're gonna to get to that uh, that big thing that we wanna discuss, and that is actually contacting support. So when we wanna contact support, it's also the same type of uh, scenario. Give them a, de a description of the issue. So be as descriptive as you can. Put in your title, hey, uh, not hey, but say, um, routing table, missing VRF routes, or, or whatever the actual issue is, and then start with your body explaining exactly what's happening and what you are expecting to happen and what isn't working. Attach your diagram, and from there you can also attach what we call a support out file or sub out file. And this file you can generate by going onto Winbox, and then you can just navigate to make sub out .rif. You can download this, or it, it, it will save it to your file system. So once it's saved on your file system, you can actually see there I've already generated one, you could potentially just download this on your computer and then attach that to the email and send that off to Microtech. Contains all kinds of useful information for them to use. And if you don't want to manually set it, you can also automatically create a file by going into your system and into Watchdog. So Watchdog is basically, um, it, it does like a ping test the whole time to something that you're watching. So if I keep pinging 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, this is what this will effectively do. If that starts timing out, it can automatically also just generate a support or sub out file for you. And you could even use this function at the bottom to email that sub out file to yourself, I'd recommend. Don't, don't just send random emails to Microtech support this way because <laughs> they'll be confused. So send yourself the email if you want to, else just store it on your file system and download it afterwards to show them, hey guys, the, the thing keeps going off and uh, here's the sub out file, can you please help us? You can even read the sub out files yourself if you'd like to by going onto Microtech's website. So I'm just going to go there now. And then from there, there's actually a, a sub out reader, sub out.riff reader. And from here, you could upload that file and also view it kind of like how Microtech does. But in essence, you just want to give them all of that information. And again, be as descriptive as you can and then you will open up that communication. It's not like you're gonna send it to them and they're instantly going to fix your issue. They might see the file and they might say, okay, this looks a bit strange to us, try this. Then you can try whatever they recommend and then see if, if it works and if it doesn't, then you keep up that communication until you guys kind of get to a, a middle point where everything works. All right, so that covers contacting marketing support, the sub out file, as well as just various little bits and bobs. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> the lecture, even though it felt like me just scolding people, telling them how to make a support ticket, but uh, it, it comes down to just being reasonable and making sure you are descriptive. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.